So this session is only about Drupal developers in Canberra. So if you're from other states, just you know, you can go anywhere else. Um, so so we really federal government focused. Uh, and uh, uh, I want to review what's going on in last, in past four years in Canberra. Uh, right. I'll have to work that way. All right, why I get to talk about this topic? Uh, because I've been working in Drupal over eight years, only in Canberra, and uh, I'm running the Drupal Meetup at the moment. So that's a link. Um, please, if you already registered in the Meetup, um, don't worry about it. If you're not, please go register and we will offer um, Drupal sessions every month. There will be free drink, free food, thanks for opening here. Um, and uh, you will learn something about Drupal. And I've been working in public sector and private sector. Currently I'm working in Deloitte. Um, so I've seen enough. Um, even when I, when I was working in private sector, I worked in, a, of course, a federal government project. Um, okay, Drupal Lights Canberra. Um, I, I think we had the first Drupal Gov in 2013. It was in the AU, it was quite small, it's just over 100 people there. And now we have like a 230 people. And well, by then, people were talking about, oh, we built Drupal website using C panels. That's cool. Um, I'm really happy that I think no one's using C panels now. Uh, and uh, during the four years, people start to use LAMP stack. I know that you know some some of you have to use Windows. Don't use Windows. Uh, but I'm happy that people start to use LAMP. And of course, Gusmas is coming. And you know, when you sign a contract with Gusmas, you you gotta use Drupal, and you have to use the standard way uh, in Drupal in development. Uh, that's a boring topic. Why Drupal? Uh, why I'm selling Drupal here? So it's free, and you don't have to pay the license for Sitecore. Uh, you don't have to pay the license for any Microsoft server. I'm anti Microsoft. Uh, and we have a really great community, and we have a really healthy community until two weeks ago. Um, so what are you using in your code base is all maintained by the community for free. Um, for example, if you want to have whichever module in your website to give you the forum or to give you a really nice image gallery, you just download it, install it for free, and people are maintaining for it for you. Uh, and Gustavus, again, um, what I really want to talk about is, is, a, is a bottom sentence that I have a friend who is actually uh, a core maintainer of Drupal, and he, I think he visited Canberra like uh, three years ago, and he told me that Canberra is the, the only town, or the first town, he went to a random cafe, he heard people talking about Drupal. Um, I guess because camera is boring, uh, or Drupal is really, really popular in camera. Uh, not only happening to him, I, sometimes I went to a copy room and I heard people recognize the, the sticker on my computer saying, oh, that's Drupal. Well, now I don't have that sticker anymore because it's all full. That's a really good time for Drupal death. And I'm not sure how many of you are Drupal devs. Right, I'm not sure how many times you get a phone call from different recruiters a day. <laughs> Recently, or within a year, it's really busy and uh, the recruiters are crazy, you know, selling the same roles from different recruiters to you. Um, so that's really good for us. A Drupal developer's life in Canberra. Um, as you know that we don't really have much Drupal developer in here, so uh, you know the recruiter will always ask you, you know anyone that who can work in Drupal, please let us know. Sorry, I don't know anyone. Uh, they all engaged. Um, and why is really 
why there's few Drupal developers in Canberra? Why? Because it is really hard. That diagram is really old. I, I think I downloaded it from a really old website, and that and that pretty much for Drupal seven. Yeah. Um, and you know, given the time, you you need to level up your skills in a really short time to be able to work in a Drupal pro project. Uh, and people saying, oh, don't worry about it, because we have Drupal 8, it'll be much better. <laughs> That's Drupal 8. <laughs> um, so I think, I think, yeah, Drupal 8 is much better for any outsiders. For, for example, you are full on, uh, full stack Drupal, uh, not Drupal, PHP developers who knows all of the modern platforms. And if you want to learn Drupal 8, cool, that's easier for you. But if you are already mastering Drupal 7, it's pretty hard for you to learn Drupal 8 because it's a different thing. It's just with, a deep, with the same name, but totally different thing. So, to be able to give this session, I sent out a survey in our meetup, pretty much to all of the devs, and asked them questions and to find out what, what are their lives like in camera. For example, um, where are the developers? Well, we have uh, more people working in public sector, less working in the private sector, um, but um, this number is not accurate because I know that most of the Drupal developers in Canberra, they are shy, they don't really go to the meetups, so they don't really know this survey. Uh, especially for those working in the government, please come to the meetup so you, you, you know the survey and you know what's going on. Uh, so I would say the number um, you know, for the Drupal developers working in the public sector will be much more than, than this one. So the percentage is, I would say, 60%. Are they working in the government project? <laughs> <laughs> also, that's not accurate, because I know that there are NGOs in Canberra using Drupal, uh, because Drupal is free, and they're using all kind of open source, like uh, uh, CRMs and, and CMS. Um, so, but I would say more than 90% of the Drupal developers are working in the federal or state project. Are they considering change job? Eh, eh. Um, we realize that you know over the years that um, the player in camera market are changing a lot. So I think I think in four years ago uh, we had different sponsor in the conference. Now they disappear. We don't really know where are they. But the people remain, so just same people running the conference and same people working in Drupal, just changing places. Um, yeah, so we see they they are considering changing jobs. Why? Because they're not happy. And I think in this session, I'm going to give the devs opportunities to say why they're not happy. Uh, I just give my idea why I'm not happy, well, currently I'm happy. Why I wasn't happy? Well, to make the developers happy, you're gonna let them <laughs> develop. Well, they don't really like politics. They don't really like any kind of management. They like code. That's why sometimes you see that they have their headphones on all the time. Uh, and, well, there's the research that you, you don't really need interrupt a developing, if you interrupt a developer, then, then it will take, I don't know, half an hour to get them back on track um, to, to follow the logic. So, yeah, please let them to do the code, nothing else, and they will enjoy coding. They will enjoy, oh, I have this old thing compiled, even you don't really know what that means, uh, but they're happy. All right, I'm going to talk about the uh, developing environment in the government. So, um, yeah, you know that I'm anti-Microsoft, but um, the fact is you have to use Microsoft sometimes in whichever department because you already signed the contract. Uh, what is the best developing environment you want to set up? Uh, it's not LAMP, it's not Microsoft, it's whatever you are using in your production. 
So, for example, if you are using uh, Mac, uh, Microsoft Windows, IIS, and Apache, uh, no, Apache, PHP, MySQL in your production, please make that web stack in your local development server or local computer because that way you can reproduce the error you are seeing in your production. If you, for example, you, your server is Microsoft and you, you of course you like uh, LAMP and you set up a Linux server locally in your own computer, you will never be able to reproduce the error you see in the server. Uh, so mainly there are three kind of stacks. Like uh, you have a LAMP, which is Drupal friendly. Drupal doesn't really run in Windows well properly. And you can set up a WAMP. Um, I used to work in department that using Windows, Apache, MySQL, PHP. And I heard, I never worked, I heard people still using IIS. Um, stop using that because no one understands that. Um, why? I like, why I think that's a perfect environment? Because, well, to improve my productivity, I need to use my own tool. I can't use Dreamweaver, for example. I don't really know how to use that. Um, I need to have, for example, PHP Storm or command line, Vim, to start to code. And, you know, when I had my headphone on, I can pretty much Nail, nail everything in, I don't know, half a day or something. Something wrong with the connection. just need to um, reopen it. The environment should integrate with your workflow. For example, if you are using Git and you are using uh, Agile, so um, probably you, you will need a uh, um, Linux gram or something. So the environment is supposed to integrate with Git. For example, you need to have a Slack or whichever common channel. When someone send a PR or someone commit something in the repo, you should get notified. How many people are using VM and Linux and Windows? That's a percentage. I think the other stands for MAMP and IIS and something I don't even know. Uh, I don't. I don't. I wouldn't say which is better uh, because you know, as I said, they, their production server may be Windows, maybe Linux. So you, you gotta you gotta reproduce that. But I do have my preferences. I would like to use VM. So anyone using VM as your development? Yeah. Um, why we use VM? Because you can install any kind of system in your VM, and the VM will run on Windows, Linux, Mac, anything. Um, so inside the VM, you can install any kind of tool or software to reproduce your production server. With the VM, 
you backend developer or frontend developer have the freedom, the permission to install any kind of tool inside the virtual box if they want to run it. For example, they can install npm as a frontend developer, and backend developer will use that. Uh, and uh, there's a there's a always a question that across the team you have for example three developers they all using different kind of software or different platform, and you need to manage three system for them. Um, everyone's using different. Oh, my Apache is broken. Please fix it for me. Um, if they are using VM, you're managing one system. So make sure that once one VM is working, then everyone's computer will just work. If you have to use Windows, if I have to use Windows because our production service Windows, what I need is someone who can understand how to configure Apache, PHP, MySQL in Windows. Because I suppose Drupal developers doesn't really have the knowledge of it. Sorry, someone with that knowledge here. Um, and I need Git Bash. Git Bash is a command, command line tool. Uh, allow me to install Drush, Composer, any other command line, and allow me to use at least use command line to do my Git commit. And you can use Drush for Drupal. And I need to get familiar with the path forward slash backslash thingy in between uh, Windows and Linux. And of course, if you have a performance issue in your production server, well, don't bother me because I can't debug it. Uh, the reason for it is I won't have New Relic. So New Relic is a tool that helps you to analyze what is your slow query and which query or in your PHP code is actually chewing up the memories. Um, in Windows, you can't install your, uh, your relic in there. And such as caching. So if you want to have any caching sitting in front of your web server to actually bounce back on all kind of like a static page, you, can, you should use Varnish, but Varnish doesn't really work in Windows. And you, of course, you need to click a lot. Well, we don't like, we like to just use a keyboard. What is the perfect tool? It doesn't really matter whether I'm using Windows or Linux. As long as I have the permission to install whichever software I want, that's a perfect tool. Or I can use my own computer. Those sentences are the, the result from the survey. So um, if those words are from you, feel free to claim it. So I, I think, I think uh, people did raise that, OK, uh, be able to provide the right IDE and tools is a big reason that they stay in the current position. The headphones. Um, I'm using that. That's a really, really nice one, by the way. Um, it's noise cancelling, so when you work in a really noisy office environment, put that on and, and you won't hear anything. Uh, it's all about communication. Uh, we, we used to feel like uh, when, when you arrive in the office in the morning, you are really popular. Everyone wants to talk to you. Um, so started from, from the IA, from the US guy, from the designer saying, that, oh, we, well, that's our, that's our interpretation of the, the requirement from the product, product owner. And uh, that's the way I designed. Does it work with Drupal? <coughs> Do you think that's possible? Then you need to sit down with them, draw a couple of diagrams, or uh, do it uh, to find out whether that's a that's a good approach or not. Then, when you decide the approach, uh, you need to talk to your backend developer or frontend developer to work out okay whose role is to actually create the frontend part of it, whose role is to give the the, the backend variables available for the frontend to work on then you have morning scrum every day, and your scrum master will actually bother you, asking what is the progress, are you, what, are, what are you working on every day? Um, after the whole thing, you find that's five o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, so you don't really have time to do the coding. You don't have time to enjoy your own time. 
and there's the other, the other side. Uh, do you see people going to the loo with the headphone on? Um, well, that's a problem that you need to keep a proper level of communication. Well, we all understand that you want to, you want to isolate yourself away from the outside world and you can do your coding and you can dive in into the logic. Um, but if you don't have your communication, you don't have your requirement cleared with your product owner or your designer, you're gonna refactor your code a lot every day. Who works from home? Do you like working from home? I used to work from home for three years, and now I hate it. Um, let's talk about why we work from home or not. That's the survey result, by the way. Uh, do you want to work from home? Like more than half, they all want to work from home. The other, the other forty percent maybe working from home some days, maybe. That's one of the sentences we got from the survey. That's a big reason they stay in the current position. So if they are working from home at the moment, managers don't bring them back. Otherwise, they will consider leaving. Why they like to work from home? Because one, I have an awesome home workstation there, or I can work when I'm in the kitchen cooking. It's just convenient. <coughs> in what condition that you can work from home, in what condition you not. Uh, when I need to talk to different people a lot every day to make sure the requirement is clear, I don't really work from home. Because you just need people to actually sit with you, to draw diagram with you, to make sure you understand what they want. And if you have a deadline tomorrow or quite soon, you should work from home. You should isolate yourself away from the work, work environment because you need to concentrate on the work. For example, you have a demo tomorrow and nothing has been done. You better lock yourself in the room separately to make sure what the demo is delivered. If the logic is a chaos, for example, you have the, the most complicated workflow using workbench moderation modules in Drupal. Um, in different, different scenarios, you're gonna send an email to different roles. Better to stay away from people. Work it out, draw a really clear diagram how the logic is working. I don't find you can work any kind of chaos or logic out when you're actually sitting within the team. You, you just can't concentrate. And when you shouldn't work from home, I need to babysit all the time at home and coding. I don't think that will work. Um, and people find, well, someone is disappeared when they're working from home. It's just hard to contact them. So for something urgent, I want to confirm this by lunchtime. I want to know what color is this button. You need to let me know. If, you, if you're working from home and we can't find you, it's, everything is gonna be delayed. And that's regarding the politics. Um, so it's pretty hard to get things done in the government. We all know that, and we all hate that. And this is from the word. Uh, feel free to claim it again. Well, the story is, normally, it's really, really frustrating for us to get things confirmed from different stakeholders. For example, normally, uh, the Drupal developers are working in the IT department or the IT branch in the department. And the product owner is normally not IT branch, it's something else, it's like communication, it can be some, some other branch. And what about the communication between the, those two branches? And you need, to, you need to send an email to the person who is 
who is making the decision what the button color like. And they will send an email to their director, and the, the director will actually take two days to, de de to decide, OK, I want this button to disappear. Uh, and also, uh, a real example is, well, you guys are working in GAPSMS, I suppose. That how long it takes that you can make a single change or a config change in your SaaS website? It, it can be frustrating um, because you need to contact, you need to send a ticket to Department of Finance, and Finance will actually assess that requirement, and maybe they need to contact Acquia to get involved to get your change, uh, and that can be months. Well, recently I've been working in a uh, collaboration uh, project between the departments, and, and uh, well, in that case, if you are working with other IT branch in other departments, you, just, you need to send the email to them, and they will actually send out the email to their directors, to their product owners, and God knows they, how long they will take to uh, get them back. Probably the email will get lost. Workflow. Uh, workflow is something that the de developers, some developers won't like, but you need to make sure you have workflow in place um, to avoid breaking your website. What is workflow? A developing workflow is something like, okay, people working in different branch, oh, by the way, you guys should use version control, stop using FTP if you are. Uh, if you are working in different features, you need to have different features as a uh, feature branch, you know, GitHub repo. And people will work assigned to different tasks and work in different repo. And when they finish the repo, you need to set up a kind of a mechanism that allowing people to review each other's code without approval from your teammate. You shouldn't, uh, you shouldn't allow people to merge the change into your master branch or whichever branch that link to your production site. Um, I see that developers do, uh, some, sometimes they're lazy, they don't want people to review their own code, and they were like, uh, um, I just want to deploy, and I'll just um, use FTP to put my code on the live site. Um, that's wrong. Um, and a real good developer will definitely use a nice tuple workflow for any deployment. And they should use a tuple coding standard uh, because you know Drupal developers are, are moving, uh, the project remains. So when you deliver or you pass your current project to a next Drupal developer, they need to understand each other's code. Um, so Drupal coding standard is a basic way that to keep the code really readable for the next developer and the Drupal way. So people have been talking about Drupal way for forever. So you should do it in Drupal way, not in the random PHP way. What is a, what is a Drupal way? A really good example. The Drupal way is, is, so if you want to have a block displaying in whichever region in the current content page, the developer, the developer either need to create a static block in the Drupal uh, block system, or they need to use the hook block info, that's Drupal 7 by the way, um, to register a block. Not Drupal way, is the developer will actually use the PHP filter and open up a static block interface and type in the PHP code directly into the WYSIWYG, or that's a bad way, so we should never have the code in your database. In your database. And a proper working uh, workflow will stop everything happening uh, because, because people are reviewing code and when something happens to your production site, you have someone to blame. Gapsimens, I guess you all want to have a say about that. Well, first of all, I want to thank uh, Gapsimens because we got the job because of that. Uh, Are you working in a GovCMS project? Yes and no. I think that's accurate um, because there, there are, there are uh, websites that is uh, quite customized and uh, uh, it can't be 
it can't be in gap seven SAS, for example. And uh, uh, some departments just can't afford um, gap seven pass. By the way, feel free to jump in if you want to talk about uh, this microphone here to talk about your experience regarding gap seven or anything I was talking about. Why I like Gossamers. I'm not trying to sell Gossamers. I'm not working in Deepmind Finance. Because it's cloud based, that actually make developer can work from home. And that actually make them to use any kind of tool they can use. I can, I can use my own computer to work in the government, a federal government project. Um, and uh, they force you to use Git. I know that someone is using SVN. We don't like it. The Drupal is Git. Um, they force you to use Git, and they they have a standard workflow. So, uh, for example, Gatsby's path will have the dev and uh, the three layers, dev staging prod layers. So you can actually drag the code and database around. Um, in SAS, they have the blue green model that you can switch in between. So that's a kind of like standard workflow uh, you have to follow that actually stops you breaking your own site. And I don't need to manage my own server. Uh, if you're using gaps and SAS, that you don't need to manage your own Drupal core base yourself. Um, the gaps and team will manage that for you. And well, uh, if you don't have any knowledge regarding uh, Linux system, and you don't really know how to write the command line, that's all right. People are actually managing the server for you. But the best part is I can work, work, I can work from home. I can use my own computer. So I don't have to set up anything in my Windows machine. And SAS. Are you familiar with SAS? So um, for you, who, for those that don't really know what is the difference between SAS and PaaS, um, SAS is software um, as service, and PaaS is platform as service. What does it mean? Um, SAS is something that you, it's like a product you already have, it's like Sidecore. When you install the software, you already have a Gatsby site running in there. Uh, you're not allowed to, to put any custom modules or changes. Well, yes, you are allowed to put some custom changes, but you're not allowed to put any custom modules in your website. For example, you think Drupal is a really open network and community. You can grab any kind of contract modules into a website. No, you can't do it in SAS. The only way to have new modules in your SAS profile is uh, to submit a ticket to Gatsby's uh, Gats team, and they will review the ticket, and they will assess, and hopefully put the modules in. There are limited permission. Um, a good example is, OK, um, anyone using Drupal project, uh, you know that in config files, uh, in, sorry, in the conf configuration page, you can actually manage your own site name. So I want to call my name, you know, department of, of whichever. Um, and when you want to change the name, you lost, a, you lost the permission. So you don't even see the configuration for your own site name. That's, uh, uh, that's what's happening in SAS. So the only way to change your site name or the, your contact email address in your website is to send out a um, query or issue to government team or Acquia, and they will handle it for you. And someone is maintaining the core, so you will never need to worry about, OK, there's a security uh, issue in the Drupal core now. I need to patch it, so you don't need to worry about that. So uh, that's all taken care of by the Gatsby team. A long template.php file. Um, because you're not allowed to put any custom modules or contract modules in Drupal, in SAS, uh, people start to think about a way around that. Uh, OK, template.php file is one file in your theme that you have the full control of. 
and you can put anything in there. So I, I knew that people started to put some really, really complicated logic in their uh, template.php file to make sure something is enabled. Uh, that can be a problem, uh, as far as I know, that um, a long template.php file is, it, it can be really messy, it can be not readable, and it can lead to any kind of a security issue. So make sure you review your code in your template.php file well before you decide to do to go it that way. Otherwise, send a ticket to Capstone's team and they will take care of, they will actually give you the, um, the suggestions. It's a different way of Drupal thinking. Uh, so as a Drupal developer, they've been doing Drupal and they were like, okay, if you, I want to achieve whichever functionality, I need to build whichever module. And in that module, I will expose whichever. Why is that again? Luckily. So um, if they're thinking about creating another module, um, that's not really available in SAS. That actually make Drupal developers' thought changed a lot. For example, I've been working in a uh, Gaptonist SaaS project for half a year, and now I'm working in some really awesome not Gaptonist project at the moment. Um, when I was asked for any kind of feature request, like, hey Josh, can you do can you create a module or can you expose whichever variables we want to know whichever thing in your Drupal project? The first thing I would think about is, okay, how can I do it from the theme? That's, that actually changed my life a lot because that's not the Drupal way we're talking about. So if you have a really custom requirement, the first thing is, okay, how can I do it from the country modules? If you can't do it with the country, country modules, how can, you, how can I do it with the custom modules? But being working in GAPS MS SAS, my thinking has been changed. I was like, okay, can I do it in my template.php file? Um, I, think, I think that's, that's bad. That's not the, the Drupal way. And, uh, um, well, I don't really know the solution for that at the moment. So I guess just keep in mind that in Drupal, there are other ways to do things right, other than doing everything in theme. No features module. Anyone knows features module? Anyone using features module as their workflow? <laughs> well, uh, features module is, is, a, is a module to keep your site secure during the uh, development. So uh, normally what people in Drupal, well, what people will do is, Okay, I need to create a content type, and in the content type, I need to have whichever field. I want to have an image field, I want to have whichever field. And I want to make it work all locally, then I want that happen in my production server. What should I do? Do I need to re-click everything in my production server? That's risky. So um, the modern Drupal way is really okay. Okay, I want to export all of the configurations regarding my content type and fields into code. And I put my code in version control. In that case, when I import that code in my production, everything is set up. So that's a really, really nice way to deploy new features in your production server without breaking the site. And since you have all your configuration in code, you can easily revert it back to uh, your previous settings your website, that's not possible in SaaS. Um, because SaaS is a software that everyone, every department is sharing the same code base. So if you have your features module in SaaS, that means that other departments will see your features module there too. So I've been talking to Department of Finance regarding the features module because they are using the features module too uh, in their own project. Um, they are working on that too in future. I don't really know the time frame yet, but in future they said they will have features module available in SAS. So we will have a better life. Other, otherwise, the real life example is um, 
in my previous project, I built everything in features. I pretty much built the whole site in features. And before the day we launched, I was told that we shouldn't use features. We should just use, uh, just manually click everything. So I spent the whole day to rebuild the whole site by clicking. I feel like I was win working in Windows. The blue-green model. For anyone who is going to use government SaaS, um, you need to get familiar with the blue-green model. Uh, what does it mean? So if you have your production server, it's running, a, it's your live site, and you want to make a change in your live site, it's quite risky, right? So you may break your live site. The way that Acquia allow you to make any change in your live site is, okay, instead of changing anything directly in your live site, you clone your live site, and they will create the clone as another instance, and you make anything you want in the clone. When you think that's ready, tell Acquia, or you have the permission to switch it over. Uh, in that way, you can deploy new features in government SaaS. What does it mean then? You won't have the control of your server. All you have is just your production and your multiple clones. You don't have the access, I mean command line access to your clones. You can't use Drash. For example, uh, Normally, if you want to see a change in your UI, you change your color of the button and the button is disappeared, you want to see the change, you need to refresh the theme, or you need to clear the cache. That's, you know, we have to say that, keep calm and clear cache in Drupal. Uh, you can't do that, you don't have the permission to do it in Captain and SAS. Uh, only people with certain level access to the Acquia Site Factory UI can do that. So when you are starting a new government SaaS project, you better to ask for that permission straight away first day, because it will take time to, give it, to, to get you the permission to clear the cache and refresh the theme. And schedule deployment. You don't, you don't get the chance to deploy your change yourself. Uh, normally what you do is you, you need to send out a, a ticket to uh, GapSend team and they will schedule the switch. So we don't really know what's going on with there. So uh, there can be problem that during the switch, uh, the URL is pointing to a different instance. Um, so the switch and the launching is on other people's hands. You don't really have any permission to do that. All right, that's all. Right. All right, platform as service. Uh, you have the full control of your server, other than, other than people, they manage your own server. Uh, three tier platform, you have dev, staging, prod, Drash integration, you just download your Drash alias so people can actually use Drash in the local command line to clear the cache, for example, in your production server. You can also SSH into your server to do any hot fix. And you get to maintain your own code. For example, if you have a security update in Drupal Core, you need to do it yourself. So uh, Gapsimism will not do it for you. Uh, and you need to control your own backup. So um, normally, you, need to, you will have, automatically you have daily backup, but um, uh, just before you launch your site, better to backup your, your database and site. And I can deploy whatever change whenever with whoever in the condition of Gapsum is not broken. Um, that's the last slide. Um, so uh, if you want to keep your Drupal dev money, um, you know, you get offered four times of your current salary. Definitely, definitely they, will, they, they will not consider whether they work in Windows or not. They don't really care. You, they can just work in the server room lock themselves with that salary. Questions or anyone got to speak anything out regarding GovSMS and anything I was talking about?
that's all right, a bit late anyway. Oh, questions? <laughs> Google? And again, come to our meetup and we'll talk about Drupal or anything. And that's my email address. If you've got, if you've got any questions regarding Drupal and regarding the meetup in Canberra, uh, send me the email. And otherwise, oh, by the way, there is a, a Drupal meetup in April happening. So uh, Chris Kim from Platform will give us a demo regarding how they manage their own platform. So uh, thank you very much. I'll see you there.